Hello students, welcome once again to Chem Estry. Please like, share and subscribe to this channel. Today we are talking about electrode potential. Electrode potential is represented by the letter E. We all know substances, as we've talked about in redox equations, lose or gain electrons. How easy it is for one substance to lose electrons, or how easy it is for a substance to gain electrons, is measured by what we call the electrode potential. So electro potential is a measure of the tendency of a substance to gain or to lose electrons. It is measured in volts. When it's a standard, we call it a standard electrode potential. It means that it is occurring at 298 Kelvin temperature, 180 M pressure, and the concentration of the electrolyte you are going to make use of is supposed to be one mole per decimeter cube. If it is standard, we bring this small degree sign on top of the E. And that tells us it is occurring at 298 Kelvin, 1 atm, and the concentration of the electrolyte is 1 mole per decimeter cube. If a substance easily accepts electrons, what it means is that that substance easily is oxidized. When a substance becomes reluctant to accept electrons, that substance loses electrons more easily instead. So how easy it is for a substance to accept or lose electrons will tell us whether the substance is going to be a strong or weak oxidizing agent or a strong or weak reducing agent. Remember, we said an oxidizing agent is a substance that is reduced in a chemical reaction. That means it is a substance that gains electron. So if the substance easily gains electrons, it becomes a better oxidizing agent. If a substance easily loses electrons, reducing agents as we know are substances that are oxidized in the uh, chemical equation. So if a substance easily loses electrons, that substance becomes a very good reducing agent. How do we know that this substance is a very good oxidizing agent? This one is a bad one or a weak one. Which substance is a strong reducing agent and which substance is a weak reducing agent? The electrode potential value is what is going to give us that idea. The electrode potential values are very important in chemistry and they are divided into two. We have the standard reduction potential and the standard oxidizing potential. The standard reduction potential is normally abbreviated as SRP. It measures the tendency of a substance to be reduced under standard conditions. The standard conditions are 298 Kelvin temperature, 1 atm pressure, and the concept Concentration of the electrolyte is one mole per decimeter cube. The more positive the standard reduction potential value, the more likely the substance will be reduced. So if we have two substances, two substances, one with a standard reduction potential value of negative 0.4, and the other with a standard reduction potential of negative 0.2. What we are saying is, this one, the one with a standard reduction potential of negative 0.2, its value is more positive than zero, negative 0.4. That means that this substance will easily undergo reduction and this one will feel reluctant in undergoing reduction. 
Also, if we have a standard reduction potential value of positive 0.3 volts and another substance with a standard reduction potential value of negative 0.1 volt, we realize this one is more positive. So it is more likely to be reduced. And if this one is reduced, this one will be oxidized. Normally, you will see the standard reduction potential written as a short, shorthand in this form. They will give you A N plus slash A probably equal to X volts. That's normally how we see it. And looking at this, this is at the reactant side, this is at the product side. So it is represented by this equation which means it is a reduction equation because you realize the charge over here is positive and over here is zero. So the oxidation number is reducing. This is how we represent a standard reduction potential equation. Either this way or the abbreviated form. The other one is the standard oxidation potential, SOP. It measures the tendency of a substance to be oxidized under standard conditions. So how easy it is for a substance to lose electrons is what we measure as the standard oxidation potential. With that one too, the more positive the standard oxidation potential value, the more likely it is for the substance to undergo oxidation. So if we have two substances, one with a standard oxidation potential value of negative 0.3 volts and another with positive 0.1 volts, this one is more positive than this one. So this one will undergo oxidation and this one will undergo reduction. That is for the standard oxidation potential value. That one too is represented by this equation. You realize over here, A has a charge of zero, oxidation number of zero, and it increases to positive N. So it is undergoing an increase in oxidation number. This is an example of an oxidation reaction. And it is written at a shorthand this way. A separated from A N plus. This line represents the line that separates the reactant from the products. One thing we need to know is the standard reduction potential value is equal to the negative of the standard oxidation potential value. Normally, electrode potential values you are going to be given would be written as standard reduction potential values. The ones you'll be given are all written in standard reduction potential values. Which means that the more positive the electro potential given to you, which we now know will be the standard reduction potential value, the more likely the substance will undergo reduction. This means the more negative the standard electro potential value they give you, S will tell you the substance will undergo oxidation. We have a chart of some substances their reduction half equations, their standard reduction potential values, and their oxidation potential values. Let's have a look at that chart and see if we can make some analysis from that chart. This is a chart of elements, some elements, their reduction half equations, their standard reduction potential values in volts, and their standard oxidation potential values also in volts. We'll be talking about the elements, the half reactions, and the standard reduction potentials for now. After that, we'll consider their standard oxidation potential values. If you look at this chart, you would realize that lithium has a standard reduction potential value of negative 3.05 volts. So imagine lithium meets another element like aluminium. Aluminium has a standard reduction potential value of negative 1.66. They are all metals. And we know all metals have the tendency to lose electrons. These two metals have met. Who 
loses electrons, who gains the electrons? That's the big question. We can decide that one using the standard reduction potential values. Remember, we said that the more positive the standard reduction potential value, the more likely the substance would undergo reduction. So if you look at these two elements, you realize that aluminum has a more positive standard reduction potential value than lithium. So when these two meet, aluminum will have to gain electrons and undergo reduction. Then lithium will have to then lose the electrons and undergo oxidation. Let's go once again. Let's imagine we have a connection between nickel and iodine. Who loses electrons and who gains electrons? Now look at the uh, standard reduction potential values. Nickel has a standard reduction potential value of z negative 0 0.25 volts. Iodine has a standard reduction potential value of positive 0 0.54 volts. Obviously, iodine has a more positive standard reduction potential value than nickel. So when they meet, nickel will have to lose electrons. Nickel will have to lose electrons. And iodine will have to gain that lost electron. So if you look at this chart, it can help us to determine strong oxidizing agents and strong reducing agents. Remember, the reducing agents are the substances that are undergoing oxidation. And the oxidizing agents are the substances undergoing reduction. So let's first consider the ones that are going to become the strongest oxidizing agents. They are the ones undergoing reduction. And as we said, the more positive the standard reduction potential value the easier it is for the substance to undergo reduction so as we move down you will see that the value gets more and more positive that means as we come down the substances become stronger oxidizing agents do you see it? Uh -huh. This also means as we go up, it becomes easier for the substances to undergo oxidation because their standard reduction potential values become more and more negative. So as we go up, the substances become better reducing agents. So from this chart, what is the best oxidizing agent we can find? The one with the most positive standard reduction potential value, and that is what? Fluorine. We also have the standard oxidation potential values over there. And what did we say about that one? We said it is the tendency of a substance to lose electrons. The more positive the value, the easier it is for the substance to lose electrons and undergo oxidation. And what do we say about oxidation? Substances undergoing oxidation are called the reducing agent. So, look at the values. Positive, positive, positive. As it comes down, it gets more negative and less positive. So, as we move up, the substances become stronger reducing agents. So do you see the benefits of the standard electrode potential values? If you look at them, 
with the standard reduction potential values, the ones that are more positive are the ones that undergo reduction easily. And they are termed as stronger oxidizing agents. If you look at the standard oxidation potential values, the ones with more positive values are the ones that can easily undergo oxidation and they are the better reducing agents. That is the benefit of this table. So whenever you are given two substances and they are connected together, who loses electrons? Who gains electrons? What will help us identify who gains and who loses electrons is the standard reduction potential values. Now we've said that the values you are going to be given are not going to be in SOP. No, they are always going to be in SRP. <laughs> So as the SRP value becomes more positive, the substance has the ability to undergo reduction more easily. If the SRP values become more negative, that substance has the ability to undergo oxidation more easily. So from this chart, these elements over here, the best oxidizing agent is fluorine, and the best reducing agent is lithium. That is the essence of the standard electrode potential values. Thank you.